Welcome back, everybody. This week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program. As mentioned back with us is Chris Arrestus, the CEO of Life Care Funding, which created the model for converting life insurance policies into protected long-term care benefit funds. Chris, welcome back on the program. It's great to have you back with us. So much we talked about in the last show. So much more to talk about, a very important topic. Thanks for taking time to be back with us. Oh, Rick, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me back. We sort of laid the groundwork last time, and you can go to our archives or go to YouTube and, and, and to watch that first interview, and we'll touch on some of the basics as, as we move through the program. A lot has happened since then. One thing that's going on is a long-term care commission that is meeting in Washington, D.C., and talking about what is going to be a very serious problem. In fact, they're calling it the Silver Tsunami. Let's first of all talk about the Long-Term Care Commission and what they're setting out to try to accomplish. Yes, the Long-Term Care Commission is a bipartisan commission that was appointed to meet and analyze what's going on with this country's ability to meet the crushing demand of paying for long-term care. You have 10,000 baby boomers a day who are turning 65. Uh, and, And the commission's conclusion was, with aging seniors and that many baby boomers turning 65 on a daily basis, that Medicare and Medicaid alone were not going to be enough to sustain the demand for long-term care services. What they concluded was that it was going to be necessary to have as much private pay and private market innovation come in and help offset Medicare and Medicaid's inability to keep up with that demand. Innovation is really a key word to what you do. I mentioned that you were a pioneer in this process of being able to convert life insurance policies, convert that into funds that you can use for the private care. Let's talk about that, because when people hear the government talk about private, their immediate thought is it's going to cost me. The government is backing off from what I would hope to be there. They're supporting me as I as I get older and I need long term care. But what you've come up with and a pioneer in the concept of taking what many of us already have and unused if we're still alive and converting that into funds that we can use for long-term care. Explain how that all works. Well, you know, first of all, let's remember that Medicaid is really intended to pay for people who are below the poverty line. If you are going to look to Medicaid to cover your long-term care expenses, that means you have spent down your assets to below the poverty line level. And one of the assets that counts against you when you're looking to go on to Medicaid is owning a life insurance policy. So a lot of people, as they get to the point where they're looking at how to pay for long-term care, and if they own a life insurance policy, will just abandon those policies. They let them go. We looked at that and we said, wait a minute, that's a significant asset that people own. They've paid premium payments for years. And now in in those final years of their lives, when they're they're moving towards long-term care, They're just throwing those policies in the trash. There has to be a better way. Everybody that owns a life insurance policy, it's their legal right to be able to sell that policy. In essence, you can trade it in, you sell it for a discount of the death benefit. You can get its living benefit value today. What we do is we help a family do that, take that money, protect it in an irrevocable FDIC insured long-term care benefit account that then will make monthly payments automatically to the care provider of their choice. When somebody does this, their private pay, which means it's their money and they're in control. That's the big difference. If you go on to Medicaid, you're no longer in control. But if you're using your own funds with with an approach such as using a life insurance policy conversion, you can choose, do you want home care, assisted living, some form of skilled nursing, you're making those decisions because you're financially in control of what is going to happen to you. Chris's website, and it's an excellent one because it really lays it out. It's an easy to understand terms because it really is a, a rather easy concept that, that, that for some reason the life insurance companies have never really told us about, and we'll talk about that later. But the, the website is lifecarefunding.com. And we talked about this before that when you get to this point where you're juggling funds, it seems like something that's expendable is, okay, I'm going to have to let the life insurance go. How often does that happen? I mean, we pay right up to the time where we really could be using it, and we let it go. We surrender the policy. You know, there's a shocking statistic, and that is that over 80% of life insurance policies that are taken out ultimately will not pay a death benefit because people will either surrender it, allow it to lapse by stop paying the premiums, or it could be a term policy that expires. 80%, four out of five policies. 
ultimately are not going to wow. pay that benefit. And and it's just, you know, it's such a shame, particularly for seniors who have paid premiums for years and years and years. And we're talking to families every day. And you mentioned our website and that we do put a lot of information on there that is simple to understand. And among what we put on there are actual family stories. And we have a lot of them, families that have used this very approach to turn around a situation where they didn't know how they were going to pay for long-term care. They were about to throw away a life insurance policy and instead converted it and put themselves in a position where they could choose the form of care they want. One of the things we're doing now is we're actually loading videos of interviews with families and and they're telling their stories direct to, to the people out there that are coming onto our website. One of the families we will have on later in the second segment of today's program, we thought it was so important to have a family come on and talk about what this has meant to them. What types of life insurance policies can we convert? So many of us have term insurance policies, and we figure the only way we're ever going to be able to to, to get any money from these is, is if we die. Is that a policy that we can convert as well? Absolutely, and I'm glad you brought that up because every form of life insurance does qualify. If you have a term life policy, universal life, whole life, even a group life policy, any form of life insurance qualifies for the conversion. And again, so few people know about it that they're just throwing these policies away, but any form of life insurance will qualify. How does a senior, how does a family go about beginning the process to convert? And again, that's all at the website, lifecarefunding.com. But to get it started, the very basic is, okay, what do I, what do I have to do? How do I qualify? Well, you know, that's the good news because there's a lot of good information out there. And there's a lot of people, particularly in the long-term care industry, people that work in nursing homes, home care workers, geriatric care managers, assisted living communities. They're out there telling families that this is something they can do. They've been on the front line now for years. They were the first to realize that using a life insurance policy was something that people could do to pay for care instead of throwing them away. So there's great information out there with long-term care companies. There's great information online. More and more insurance agents now are starting to talk about this and let fit people know and families know that this is a way they can use a policy to pay for care. And of course, there's great information on our website and, and just by Googling. Doing a little bit of research, you'd be amazed how much information, how many people are writing stories and talking about this very approach to helping people pay for long-term care of any form. Chris Arrestus is our guest on This Week in America. Our website is thisweekinamerica.us. Of course, you can go there, link on, and uh, and log on and get uh, get information from Chris, whose website is lifecarefunding.com, a pioneer in the field of protected long-ter- long-term care benefits. And let's talk about, uh, you mentioned getting it started, and the process is, is very simple. It's explained it in lifecarefunding.com. When the Congressional Committee got together, they had sort of a dire outlook for what's going to happen. What is the the reaction you're getting from Washington politicians? Are they are they getting on board now with what you're what you're talking about the program? You know, despite the somewhat tepid response to this from life insurance companies who would prefer that that we're not out there talking about this. Political leaders in Washington and throughout the states have been very supportive. There's been a lot of activity going on. Um, recently, we, we, we've seen now that on the Medicare website itself, Medicare.gov, they have a page that talks about people can use life insurance policies to pay for long-term care. States have been introducing legislation because they want to make sure people are being informed of their legal right to do this. The, the state of Texas a little earlier this summer, passed a law that mandates that their Medicaid department now must inform everybody that would look at Medicaid that first, if they have a life insurance policy, they could use this option, stay private pay, choose the form of care they want, and delay needing to go on to Medicaid. It's in the best interest of that senior and their family. It's also in the best interest of the taxpayers. If you can delay people going on to Medicaid, you're saving taxpayer dollars, and that's all of our money across the country. Well, yeah, there's so two exciting things coming out of this. One is for many people, it's something they already have, but they fully don't understand that they can actually use that to pay for long-term care. And second of all, whenever that money is coming out of the, the private sector, that's not public money that, that goes into that. So you're saving taxpayer money in the long run. Everybody wins. That's right. And we're, and we're really happy about the kind of support we're seeing politically. A uh, lot, of, lot of very positive uh, stories in the press. 
consumer groups, AARP spoke positively about this in, in, in a testimony in Florida where Florida was looking at that same legislative approach to make sure that the Medicaid department's talking about it. The head of AARP in Florida spoke up and said, this is good for the consumer. It's good for the state. It's good for the taxpayers. It's good for the providers of care. And they encouraged that, that Florida and all states around the country adopt this kind of approach to making sure people are informed that this is something they can do. What percentage of a policy are we able to convert? You know, it, it ranges a low of, say, 20 percent to a high of 60 percent and even and even greater. On average, about 45 percent is what we see uh, across the board. You know, it, 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 it swings between a low and a high, but it averages out to be about 45 percent of the death benefit. So if you had a $100,000 life insurance policy in a very short time frame, that could be turned into $45,000 potentially of long-term care benefit protected in an account with that account making payments every month directly to your care provider on your behalf. Yeah. How do you go about doing that? What's the logistics of, uh, of actually setting up that payment process every month and determining how much you're going to be able to pay each month? When the person engages the policy conversion, they will sign a, a bank and trust document where the money is going to be held that will then, at their direction, establish the amount of money that would be paid on a monthly basis and to the care provider of their choice. Now, what's good is this is a very flexible benefit. So you may start out in home care at a couple thousand dollars a month. Your needs could change. A few months later, you need to move to assisted living for or 5000 a month. Well, then you can just change that benefit amount to go from the two to the five and go from home care to assisted living. The accounts also hold a funeral benefit for every family so that when, when their loved one does finally pass, a portion of that benefit's there to help with the funeral expenses as well. What happens if I outlive the, uh, the amount I'm able to convert? If anybody were to outlive the, the benefit, let's say half the money were there, there was $20,000 sitting in the account and they passed away. Well, that money would automatically go to the family a designated beneficiary of the family would receive that money um, automatically. You know, falling into the category that the baby boomers that are turning uh, 65 uh, on a daily basis, you mentioned like 10,000 of us fall into that category, get mailings a couple times a week for long-term care insurance, just so people aren't confused. Explain the difference because this is actually using something, again, that most of us already have. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. There's a big difference between long-term care insurance and a life insurance policy conversion. Long-term care insurance is something you're going to buy in advance as young as possible to get as, as, as small a premium payment as possible. So some people will buy a long-term care insurance policy and hold it for 20 years or more before they need it. With this approach, you're using a life insurance policy you already own to address an immediate need for care. So if you didn't have long-term care insurance, or if you did, it doesn't matter. If you have life insurance, you're gonna be able to convert it in a very quick process. There's no fees associated with it, and you will be able to address immediate needs. So the families that are using this program are families that are trying to cover the cost of care almost immediately, within a pretty short time frame. Uh, you know, many of them are already in a care environment and might be running out of money, others, want to get into some form of care and they can't afford it. They convert the life insurance policy and they're very quickly able to establish that account to take over those, those payments. A couple of statistics that jump out is the number of us who will have to use this and the cost that we're, that we're talking about. You know, if you're healthy right now, you're really probably not thinking, I'm not going to need long-term care at any point. I work out every day. I eat right. I'm healthy. I, I talk about the percentage of us that actually will fall in the category of needing long-term care and what we can look at as a, as a reasonable expense for that care. Three out of four people over the age of 65 are going to require some form of long-term care in their remaining lifetime. And the expenses associated with long-term care can be significant. It, it's common that somebody could be spending as much as $100,000 a year cash on, on long-term care and assisted living, home care, skilled nursing at a private pay level can be very expensive. So what we encourage families to do is make sure that they're planning, make sure that they're having a discussion amongst themselves. Are we prepared? Are we planning? What do we have for assets? Is there a life insurance policy? Is there a long-term care insurance policy? Is there savings? What do we have to work with so that we're not caught unaware and, 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 and not ready to handle a crisis situation when it arises, which unfortunately is the point when most people start talking about long-term care? A loved one's laying in a hospital bed 
everybody starts looking around at each other and says, well, what are we going to do about long-term care now? And that's when they start planning when the clock's ticking. Great information, easy to understand, easy to follow, lifecarefunding.com. The one thing that, that jumps out as you read through that is that by converting, we really are in control. We, of course, we've got a budget that we're dealing with, but we can pick and choose where we, where we want to go, the type of service that we receive, the type of care we receive. If we leave it up to the government, what they're going to tell us what type of care we're going to get. Exactly. You want to be in position of control, not in a position of being controlled. You want financial independence, not financial dependence. And for, for the middle class seniors, particularly that we work with, you know, in their in their final years of life, dignity, financial freedom are, are, are important. They deserve it. And if they have an asset, if they have planned and, and using something like a life insurance policy conversion can make all the difference. Don't let those policies go. You've got to hang on to them and, and, and understand what you're confronting as you move forward when it comes to long term care. Chris Arrestus, our guest on This Week in America, LifeCareFunding.com, a pioneer in the area of protected long-term care benefit funds. Uh, A couple minutes left in the show. We want to talk about what we're going to do in the second segment. Before I do that, from a personal standpoint, and I mentioned you're the pioneer, been doing this for around five years. What's it? And I know you you want to get the word out to more people, which is what we're doing and in, in doing by going and lobbying in, in various states around the country. But what's it feel like from a positive standpoint that at the end of the day, I was just able to talk to a number of people that thought it was hopeless that they were going to have to end up in a home of some kind. They didn't even know they had funds available to actually pick assisted care, something close to home. Again, their choice. It has to be a, a very good feeling for you at the end of the day when you've helped people in this situation. Rick, I can't tell you how pleased we are. Everybody at our company that that's talking to families, helping them in these situations, because when they call us, they're 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 in they're in a crisis mode. They're looking for somebody who can help them, give them some information, lend them lend them an ear of understanding, and and answer their questions. That's what we do. We lay out for them what options are, and sometimes our option's not the right option for them, and we'll let them know. If we're not something that can help them, we'll point them in the direction of, of something else that can. Uh, but if they have that life insurance policy, oftentimes we're the right option that they could choose to help pay for care. And it feels good when you're getting that positive feedback and you're knowing you're making a difference in people's lives, helping them to, to, to be in control of their decisions, get the proper form of long-term care. And, and along the way, keeping people off of Medicaid longer. We know we're also saving taxpayer dollars across this country, and that makes us feel pretty darn good, too. The website is lifecarefunding.com. Our website this week at america.com will have that. You can uh, you can log on to that, lifecarefunding.com, our website this week at america.us. Uh, you've got testimonials up there. When we take a break, we're going to come back and actually talk to Uh, to a family that's actually gone through the process. There's nothing like testimonials from real people. They're all very emotional stories. Talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to see in the next segment. Yeah, you're going to be speaking with um, a a woman who used our program to help her father remain at home. His desire and the family's desire was to use a life insurance policy that they weren't even sure they were going to hang on to. It was getting expensive in premiums to, to continue keeping Uh, they converted that policy into something that allowed their father to to remain at home the rest of his life, getting nursing care at home with his family. Uh, And and I think you're going to really be um, touched by the story and the impact it had on this family, who at first were a little skeptical. Wait a minute, we're going to get rid of a life insurance policy? Uh, Is this real? I've never heard of this before. But they went forward with it, and it made a huge difference in their life. And I think you're going to really feel like you've learned a lot after you've spoken with with the woman that uh, will be joining the program shortly. Well, it's interesting because so many of those elements you're talking about are relatable to us. We could, it, it sounds like a fairly common scenario. We will do this, and then Chris will be back to wrap up the program. Again, the website is lifecarefunding.com. Chris Arrestus, our guest on the program. We'll take a break. We'll be right back to talk further about uh, uh, about the protected long-term care benefit funds with uh, a family member, someone who's actually gone through it. Again, the website, lifecarefunding.com. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 